Once again, you need to put on a roll. It's showtime! It's showtime. Do you feel you are lagging in terms of getting your hands on a great property deal? Because sometimes I have that thought. And that's when I tell myself, well, Chaz, put on your negotiator hat. And I must admit, it's no Sherlock look, but you should dress the part. Think of negotiating as an art form because, and here's the big reveal, it is. It requires practice and skill and those two can go hand in hand the more you practice the more skillful you get well correction what you need are some savvy negotiating skills savvy. you're well on your way to becoming a negotiator once you prepare and gain knowledge let's look at how you can negotiate with sellers like a pro because there's no other way to do it first off you must know your market do you know when it's a buyer's market for example that usually happens when there are more houses for sale than the number of people interested in purchasing them or the number of people who are actually purchasing them you can spot a buyer's market a mile away during economic uncertainty for example the early stage of dare i say the pandemic people think it's best to not move during such times so they wait for the dust to settle and there's uncertainty so people don't want to invest their money because they don't know what the future holds and when that happens uh, properties can be on sale for a long time uh, and the buyer as in you and me uh, has an open window to get a great deal because somebody who's selling who's motivated to sell wants the money so they'll negotiate and do a deal that works for both sides hopefully and on the other hand a seller's market is when there are a multitude of buyers that are putting offers uh, on any one particular property uh, and the seller has lots of choice therefore uh, the offers are going to be above asking price because people have this habit of outbidding each other uh, without actually looking at what the property is actually worth sometimes and that happens more at auction than other places and that's when you see a bidding war and my advice to you is always get out when you see a bidding war because you don't want to overpay unless there's really good reason to do so. If sellers and buyers are more balanced, you should try to negotiate, I'd say, at around a 10, 5 to 10% uh, of the asking price. Uh, I've done more and I've done a lot more and sometimes I've done less. And if you're a hard bargainer, obviously you want to do more. Uh, that just depends how much time you have on your hands and how good you are at negotiating and how motivated the seller is. But remember, the best results for negotiation are when no one walks away perfectly happy both think they could have got more and should have got more and it's important you also uh, conduct good research you can wing it if you want but that really works and if you want if you want to be a pro then remember pros do not wing it they practice they rehearse uh, they research and then they put on their best show it's best to find out the value of similar houses that have been sold recently so you know uh, where you are in, in the marketplace and this way you can then make appropriate offers although your starting offer may be inappropriate some people use that strategy i don't personally but some do but i think that's a high risk strategy because you can annoy the seller and you can ask the agent how long the property has been listed that gives you an indication of how keen a seller may be now, another thing to add to your list of skills as a negotiator is setting the maximum price in your mind that's the maximum price in your mind it's not just about finding the right property it's finding it at the right price because any idiot can buy a property, but only a smart person will buy it at the right price. Before you embark on the journey of becoming a skilled negotiator or an improved negotiator, you should establish a maximum price point in your head and then stick to it. Don't move from it, as in don't go up. You can go down, don't go up. And how, you may ask? Well, quite simply, when you're estimating uh, all your costs, you should determine the limit of your affordability because everybody has limits when it comes to affordability it will give you a clearer picture of uh, what you can offer and uh, the required counter offers during the negotiating process but remember the price is not everything it's a factor but not the factor in my opinion other factors matter as well such as condition of property location features potential opportunity and I think these factors should also be considered when making your overall decision 
and by doing so you can rest assured that you will be getting the best deal possible because you've done your research you know your parameters you know your boundaries you know your limits and then you work to them and that all of that hopefully will stop you overpaying for a house and you can use that knowledge you have to make an informed offer on a property uh, which meets your requirements once you reach the destination called offer you need to sell it to the seller if it's your first time or you're a seasoned investor then it's a plus point as you are free of any chains uh, thus the seller will get a fast sale I'll do that bit again uh, if you've got if you're not a part of a chain then it makes it easier because you can do a quicker sale and this is a perfect opportunity for you to get a great deal because most people when selling don't like chains because chains sometimes take too long you must show that the seller proof of the agreement of a mortgage so that they are aware of how serious you are there's no requirement for this but it can just get you that edge over most other people uh, and obviously make sure you reach out to your uh, solicitor uh, make sure you can show proof of your funds and get that uh, all ready to go so you can say look I've got my solicitor I've got my mortgage offer here's why I'm, I'm offering all of this to you I'm good to go I'm serious that puts you in a very different position next question that arises is what step should you take to make an offer on a property the first step is formally making an offer and that as obvious as, as it is some people don't know that you need to communicate if it's with an agent to the agent what your offer is and I always give a reason why I think that's important to help people understand your train of thought and estate agents are obligated to pass on that offer to the seller that's part of their engagement and their terms and don't give the offer just over the phone you can do it initially but follow up in writing I think that's very important uh, because that just avoids any possible confusion and it gives you clarity and it also gives you some proof of what you did and when you did it next then let them know your position as an investor and a buyer uh, you are attractive to a seller because they know you're looking to buy stuff simple as that specifically those who want to get rid of long chains and the possibility of delays because let's face the fact when somebody is selling they usually want to sell their property quickly and if you're a cash buyer uh, then hooray for you because you can move swiftly everybody likes a cash buyer uh, being eager to get a move on can help your case because you, your goals are then aligned to a seller's goal and now that a seller has an idea of where you stand they can show their interest in your offer uh, by entering into a negotiation uh, with you and if it's through an agent then obviously the agent will do that part of the work because that's what they get paid for partly a seller has an advantage in this case as they have a professional negotiator on their side uh, because they're paying their fee and if you want to level the playing field then you can appoint a buyer's agent to help you out especially if you're inexperienced and don't think a seller's agent is your friend because they're acting for the seller because that's the person who's paying their fee forget that not once your offer has been accepted make sure you ask them to put a sold board and take it off market uh, this decreases the chances of possible delays disagreements other people putting offers in all kinds of silly stuff happens uh, and I've seen quite a bit of it I haven't seen it all but I've seen quite a bit of it over the last 20 years you, you should also consider insurance as a buyer either party can pull out of the agreement before uh, they exchange contracts uh, and remember that let's talk about opening negotiations the first rule of any negotiation is to start at a sensible stage some will say low uh, I think start at a, at a sensible stage and that sensible stage is based on your research for what you think is a good number likewise a sensible rule of thumb to remember is between 5 to 10 percent lower than the asking price but like I said that's just a rule of thumb go lower if you can usually an agent lets you know if any bid trumps yours whether they tell the truth or not I don't know but you need to uh, suss that out and read uh, between the lines uh, but it gives you an opportunity to make a second bid if somebody has, has offered a higher amount uh, you can then go for a third bid if you want uh, to proceed by uh, entering into an, a, a, a basically a fight so to speak uh, with some other seller who you don't know whether, even if they exist the only condition you go above the asking price is in the rare circumstances that you want that home desperately uh, this is the investment of your dreams you've been waiting for it you really love it uh, you fall in love with it it works for you maybe, maybe you're, you're going to live there go for it but as an investment property I don't think you should make that mistake 
or it's best to remain calm and polite. No point getting fr frustrated or emotional because uh, that gets you nowhere, it gets you upset and you end up doing silly things. Uh, you can play hard to get but don't become impossible to get uh, because that's going to lose you deals. Again, you need to find a balance. Uh, by that I mean stay realistic, logical, pragmatic because uh, that's when you're at your best usually. Uh, if a seller appears desperate to you, then you should not seem too eager. Don't have that big smile on your face and start doing star jumps in front of them or in front of the agent because that gives the game away. Uh, you can skip the estate agent and go straight to a seller to negotiate if you prefer, uh, but don't do it if they have an agent because I think uh, that's quite rude uh, and it's not the way we do business in the UK. Uh, and it's going to be harder to do so anyway and you might end up killing the deal because the agent will say go to somebody else because this guy's trying to, or girl's trying to cut me out so I'm going to lose my fees. Uh, and most agents uh, are good agents and they want to seal the deal and they'll try and do what they can because they want to get paid and if they don't do a deal they don't get paid simple as that so you're singing from the same song sheet side note if other things are thrown into the mix do not get sidetracked stay focused staying focused is extremely important especially when negotiating and those are the ways you can become a ninja negotiator slashing your way through high prices by being sensible smart pragmatic doing your research uh, not putting in stupid silly offers trying your luck knowing where you stand and then putting in an offer uh, that meets that particular uh, requirement until next time where i show you how to survive if the machines take over and yes they are going to take over very soon and you are need to be ahead of that